On the 14th of December 2012, Miranda Gibson climbed a massive eucalyptus tree in one of southern Tasmania's old growth forests and vowed to stay until the forest was protected. She has been there for 230 days so far and has broken the record for the longest Australian tree sit. This action is a project of the environmental activist group Still Wild, Still Threatened, based in Tasmania. I visited Miranda for Green Left TV on a cold, wet day in July. So how have you been? How are you surviving winter? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it's been a pretty incredible winter. Um, we've had some amazing times where it's um, snowed quite a bit up here, which has been so beautiful to see the forest in the snow, but obviously it does get quite cold as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm doing really well, and I mean, I've got such a great, um, you know, crew of support um, from my group, Still Wild, Still Threatened, and also, like, a lot of support from people in the local communities around here, too, that come out to visit me and, um, you know, send me up. Um, food that they've made and, and things like that so I mean that kind of keeps my spirits up and keeps me going. <laughs> Great. You've been up here for seven months. How are you different from when you came? Yeah well I mean I think um, seven months living at the top of a tree has been an amazingly life-changing experience and um, you know it has been you know while it's been such a critical um, campaign tool I mean it has also been a really you know personal journey as well and I mean I think the um, you know the most amazing experience of it really is just being able to spend so much time constantly in the forest and to witness the forest and the way it changes and you know and not just witness it but to really be a part of it like everything that the forest is experiencing when it's cold when it's hot when it's really windy and the trees like blowing around like you know you know the trees kind of having to go through that and you know I'm, I'm having to go through it too so I think it's a really like amazing opportunity to connect with this forest and to really understand it. Do you feel differently towards the forest now than when you came? Is it a different place for you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's been um, a really interesting experience because when I came up this tree, they had already started working and were logging in this coop and they'd been logging for two days. And I guess I came up here with the intention that I would, from this platform, I would film them logging and expose that to the world. So I guess I came up, you know, kind of with a sense that this this forest around me is going to get to get logged and I think I kind of you know didn't want to be too connected to it and you know just kind of you know know that I'm here to to do my job of, of filming it um but you know it's such a great thing that really because I was up here and you know exposing what was going on they actually left and they haven't come back um since so you know all this forest around me would have been felled months ago and you know it's still standing today because I'm here and I think that's you know an amazing um you know amazing thing on its own and obviously the issue is broader than this forest and I really want to see the protection of all high conservation value forests across Tasmania and that's the aim but I think you know it is nice to be able to to have that experience of, of now having been up here seven months and, you know, look out over this forest and, and that it's still standing and, you know, be able to connect with the forest over that time. What do you think wild places mean? Well, you know, why is it important for us to still have wild places? Yeah, well, I think, I guess, you know, in this context, um, we're talking about them being wild as in they're not being, you know, manipulated by human intervention um, it, it, on an industrial scale. When I look out and I see part of this valley has already been logged and I can see clear fells and I can see roads, it has such a different feeling to it to, you know, areas where you, you're looking out and it's completely pristine and there, are, there is no, um, you know, there is no industry in the landscape. And I think it's really critical that we are maintaining areas um, you know as close as possible to you know the way they naturally exist and to maintain those natural processes those biological um, processes in the landscape because you know what's what's happening with industrial scale forestry is that you know they are turning these wild places into managed landscapes they're you know they're regrowing a forest that's never the same as the one that they've cut down and it doesn't look the same and it doesn't feel the same and it certainly doesn't provide the same habitat or the same ecosystem so I mean I guess that's what it's really about it's about keeping these places um, intact the way that they've been evolving for millions of years compared to a forestry operation where they're um, you know regenerating and cutting down the trees every 80 years they're only growing species that they want to um, use for timber they're not allowing their forest to you know be in its natural state when they cut down these forests um, you know it is gone for good because they completely destroy the ecosystem as it stands 
fans, um, you know, and after they've logged it, they also high intensity burn, which basically uh, transforms this area into, um, you know, it's converted by people to be a different kind of landscape because a lot of the trees in the in these kind of forests are rainforest species and they don't grow back after fire. Only the eucalypts do, so they're completely changing it and making it into a managed forest. And you know, it will it will not be the same again, um, and especially when they're logging it every eight years. And I think it's really significant, you know, not just for Tasmania but on a global scale. And you know, there are so many forests around the world that have been lost, and we are lucky that you know, while there has been so much logging here, we still have these patches that are intact, and you know, they are the last remaining areas, and that's why it's getting more and more critical to preserve them. And you know, it has been verified now by um, you know independent scientists that this is of world heritage value. That it, that this forest here should be protected within the world heritage area and you know protected um, you know for Tasmanians and for the whole world. I guess it's amazing how much these forests mean to people and when you see people in the community come out to this forest and you know it's so important to to people to have that experience of being in a place that isn't um, you know completely designed and and manufactured by you know humans and I think that um, and I think that it is something really you know strong about you know what people want for themselves as well that really gives them that deep connection when they come to these places. What was it about this issue that grabbed you and made you want to make this commitment? Yeah well I think I think there are a lot of issues and you know there's so many things that um, that I care about and that I think you know need to be changed in the world and and forest is just one of them I think um, you know but by doing what I can for the forest you know that's contributing as, as much as I can to to making change in the world and you know um, I do think that I guess for me, my passion for the forest really just comes from my experience of these forests and, you know, the very first time that I stepped foot in an old growth forest and that experience of, you know, standing underneath these giant trees that are hundreds of years older than me and, you know, surrounded by such an amazing ecosystem and I think, you know, then going from there and stepping into a clear fell and seeing the absolute devastation that occurs, um, you know, that's really what has inspired me to want to do something about the, this issue. So. How old is this tree that we're in now? Um, well, I'd estimate it to be about 400 years old. Um, it can be difficult to tell um, exactly how old it is um, based on you know the conditions it's growing in and that sort of thing. But similar sized trees in this area in the Styx Valley, um, just over the other side of that ridge there, we um, did some carbon dating of, um, of trees and found ones about this size to be about 400 years old. It's quite a bit of history, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, and... How long does it take down uh, take to destroy a tree of 400 years? Not very long. No, well, I've you know sadly I've actually witnessed them um, cutting down trees of this size um, in logging coops, and um, you know it can take them about 15 minutes to get their chainsaw all the way through it, and then for it to fall. And you know to think that you know this tree has been growing for so much longer than those people were even alive. Um, it's so devastating to see it fall so quickly. When I'm in this forest and I think about the history that this you know that this tree has been here for, um, you know for the time when you know. Um, no, no white people were in this country and you know people were living here um, in this area um, you know in, in harmony with this forest and through that through its life it has seen a complete change um, you know with the invasion of Australia and then you know it, a complete transformation of the landscape around it here and uh, I just hope that you know this area of forest will will survive that industrialization and actually be protected into the future. And that's why, you know, when Forestry Tasmania are saying, but we grow the trees back, they're missing the point that it's not just about, you know, growing another tree, it's about the the tree's role in the entire ecosystem and when you fell it, take it away and burn the area, you, you're not allowing it to, to return to the um, to the forest and provide all those extra um, you know, life cycle processes that it does. If people want to support you, and I expect there are a great many people, what's the best way that they can do that? Well, I think, you know, it's really great if people can um, help out and get on board by um, taking a bit of action themselves because, you know, while um, I guess for me, I think my action up here, it's just... Um, 
it really has to be a catalyst for creating um, change through other people getting on board and taking action. And you know, myself sitting in the tree on my own isn't isn't going to be the thing that saves the forest on its own. And so I really encourage people to get active and get involved. And you know, I mean, a, a simple and easy way for people to do that is to take part in the cyber action. So what we've got is um, online, and there's a link on my website. Is people can um, send an email to the the companies that are buying products from these forests. So basically what we have is a company called Ta An. They're a Malaysian company who um, are producing a veneer product. And the key issue is that they actually are logging forests like this one. This area has been listed to go to them. Um, and But then they're selling the product as an environmentally friendly product. They've labelled it and in fact told their customers that it's made from plantations or managed regrowth, which clearly this isn't. Um, you know, And it has been officially documented that they are the key driver um, behind a lot of this high conservation value for us. So one of the things that I'm really encouraging people to do is to send an email to those customers, um, the corporate customers that are buying products of this company, and to let them know that this is not plantation or regrowth, that it's old growth and high conservation value forest that's getting destroyed and really encourage those customers to ask Ta and to um, you know, come in line with what they're saying and actually move to a sustainable forestry industry and not be logging these high conservation value forests. If people you know, want to um, find out more about what I'm doing and really support um, my action then you know, it's great if people want to get on the website and follow the blog I mean I update that about my life up here and about you know the forest issue in general um, and there's also links on the website there if people want to contact me directly and ask for other ways that they can help there's plenty of you know um, ways that people could get involved and to support this action um, and there's you know contact details and a um, mailing address there if people want to um, write to me or send anything. Thank you to Miranda for spending some time with us and to Morgan at Still Wild, Still Threatened for guiding us in.